today I'm going to be doing another installment on the six G hands of the Bobishi. I'm going to be talking about the iron bone hand. Now, in the Bobishi, the iron bone hand is depicted thusly. And you'll see that the fingers seem to be angled down in an almost inhuman fashion. And I believe that this is actually a clue as to how we're meant to properly form this hand. All right? Uh, now, in the copy that I have, um, the description of it just goes on and on about some relentless training process that's uh, meant to condition the hand and um, says it'll cause you to lose your finger, your fingernails and all kinds of crazy stuff like that. Um, it seems like it's almost trying to describe a, a sort of snake fist, uh, which would be used for thrusting, okay, thrusting like that. Um, and that's not how I use it. Uh, so, firstly, the iron bone hand is different from the ridge hand, and that a ridge hand, the thumb just goes along the side like this, okay? And um, by curving it down like that, this is a dangerous bone to hit with, but it's fine for striking soft tissue. It actually makes a really good point for striking soft tissue. So here and here both simultaneously, um, those are your weapons. And that's really good for getting in here um, at the uh, carotid sinus, or if you're a little closer and able to close the distance, for going around the back of the head and striking the points there at the base of the skull, okay? But what I find is with the ridge hand, it's almost better to have a, a little bit of flexion in it, okay, to kind of snap it uh, or swing it a little. Um, so it's, it's a softer kind of technique. Where with the iron bone hand, okay, firstly, what you're doing is you're bringing the thumb way down here, and what this does is just like in creating a snake fist, it tightens the muscles around the hand and causes it to become a more solid structure, okay, which is what facilitates the uh, the poking kind of thrusting um, without breaking your fingers. But, you know, again, it takes a lot of conditioning, and I would just as soon use a, a leopard paw or something like that to get at the same kind of targets. Um, I just find that it's preferable, but... Anyway, today we're talking about the iron bone hand. So the first thing that we're doing, just like in a snake fist, we're bringing the thumb down and tightening these muscles. But then notice how in a ridge hand, or even in a snake fist, the hand goes up from the arm. Okay, there's a, there's a curve there. In the iron bone hand, you're tilting that down so that it creates a straight line. And this that becomes your weapon. That's the part that you're, that's the end of your weapon. That's the part that you're trying to strike with, okay? Uh, and of course, you can strike with any other part of the arm or whatever, too. I mean, depends on what the situation is. But for the purposes of this video, talking about the iron bone hand, this is really where we're focusing, okay? And what you want to do is utilize the architecture of the body and maximize that, even to the point of using the entire arm when you can, okay? And this all depends on your application and your particular situation, but I'm gonna show you now, and hopefully you'll still be able to hear my voice on the camera. I'm gonna show you now a couple of ways that that's used, all right? Now, for the long arm, for the distance strike, um, and this is the hardest thing to train for because the tendency is to just wanna swing your hand, but notice what happens with this is the bones of your arm turn, all right? And so your, um, uh, the two bones of your arm, the, uh, the ulnar and the radius, um, they are twisted in that position, okay? And what you actually want to do is line them up, and even to the point of lining them up with the bone of your upper arm as well. So when you're striking with this, the important thing to do in your training is to keep the back of your hand lined up with the back of your arm. That way when you swing, you're swinging, you're rotating the shoulder and you're swinging with the entire force of the body, okay? And you're cutting down like that. You're slashing, okay? And what this is doing is 
using the structure of the body to make this a very hard weapon so that you're getting maximum force out of it, okay? Um, and so what this would be targeted at, for example, would be, um, again, the, uh, the carotid sinus, okay, for a knockout. And by swinging like this, though, if you have superior reach especially, not only are you striking the target, but you are also moving any potential incoming attacks out of the way, again, using the strongest portion of your arm. If you were to go like this, you're using weak parts of your arm. You're using the underside, the soft underbelly, if you will, okay? And so by striking somebody else's arm like that, that hurts. But if you have superior reach and they're trying to get inside your reach with a strike, you can counter that strike and apply your own knockout at the same time by using this kind of technique. So, um, for example, if somebody had come at you, somebody's uh, striking at you, you know, coming in this way, uh, knife or what have you, all right, you will move that attack out of the way, get outside, get off the line of attack, and swing this weapon into the carotid sinus. And when you're coming down with it, you're not only striking the carotid sinus, but you're actually slashing across. You're coming down like this, and of course that's going to come across the trachea, which then, of course, you know, disrupts the breath too. So you're attacking um, the uh, you're attacking the nerve, you're attacking the blood vessels, and you're attacking the breath. That's three different types uh, of attack all in one movement. All right, while also, as I said, countering if something was actually coming in at the same time. So that's one long range attack. Another way of doing it, and this is a bit easier to train because it doesn't require so much twisting of the body, um, is coming up. And again, we're remembering to keep all of this straight. Okay, hopefully this is showing up on the camera. Keeping all of this so that the bone, the iron bone hand, lines up with the bones of the arm going all the way up, okay? And for this, it's just an upper strike, okay? And coming straight up like that would be a way of attacking the nerves of the arm. And you've actually got the ulnar nerve and the radial nerve, they're all kind of lining around through here, okay? They come, they come down from up here. One goes inside, one goes outside. They come around, and then they go down through here, and they branch off as they go down into the fingers, okay? But any of those targets, really, any of those um, points, and, of course, if you... Uh, study your cue show or what have you, you'll, uh, you'll know where those points are, but one way to find it, just take your finger and get in there on the lower side of your arm, and if you just press and kind of rub, you'll find it. <laughs> um, and when you do, you'll, it feels, it's almost like a shock runs down your arm. You can feel it in your fingertips, okay? And that nerve really controls the whole arm and the side of the body. Um, so by striking it with a very hard weapon, and you have to have a hard weapon to strike this because it's underneath the muscle, okay? And if a person is, is really buff and, you know, has more muscle than you do, you've got to have a, a way of penetrating through that muscle to attack the nerve. So it's not just a matter of hitting it. You have to hit it with penetrating force. And, you know, some people will use a fist for that, and that's all well and good if you can get that kind of penetrating force with a fist. But here's the problem. A fist is a broad weapon where the iron bone hand is a narrow weapon. And the more narrow the weapon is, the better the penetrating force, okay? It's like the difference between hitting with a hammer and hitting with a nail. So that's why this is an ideal weapon for attacking that nerve. Among other things, but this is one thing that you would use it for. Um, and attacking that nerve is especially good for disarms, by the way. So, like... If somebody has a weapon in hand, if they have a knife or a stick or what have you, um, by moving inside of that, because remember, weapons are dangerous only from in front of them. So whenever there's a weapon around, where do you want to be? You want to be behind it, okay? So the first thing you're going to do is move inside of that, okay? And then strike with the iron bone hand. Remember to keep all that straight so that's nice and solid. And strike into the nerve which will typically cause somebody's arm, their hand will jerk when you strike that nerve and uh, they'll drop the weapon, okay? So those are both long range attacks. Now, you can also use this at close quarters though because 
You're not always in a position where you can swing your whole arm like that, okay? But you're still going to maximize that structural integrity, in this case, just using the forearm, all right? So you're going to swing it, first of all, like a pendulum, all right, from the elbow. Um, let's say if you're up in close quarters, okay, and maybe like as far as from me to the camera here, and we might be caught in a grapple or something, you know, maybe I've got their hands, you know, maybe they have a weapon, maybe they don't, it doesn't matter. Maybe I've got their wrist and I've got them pushed against the wall or something, right, to, to keep them from coming at me, but we're still trapped, we're still in close, in close quarters, and they still have the weapon menacing me. Um, you know, I can't, I can't consider that a neutralized threat, we're just in a deadlock. So we're going to use the iron bone hand swinging the arm like a pendulum, and remember, making a straight line. Don't worry about this side of the hand because you're not striking with this, you're striking with this. And you want to use the anatomy to give you a more solid weapon, okay? So you're going to swing the arm like a pendulum, and this works even if you're caught in a grapple, okay? Even if my arm or their arm is in the way, this allows you to swing around that and still get in there to the carotid sinus, okay? Which, of course, is a knockout if you strike it with a penetrating blow. Um, so we're just going to bring this arm up and strike with the iron bone hand. <clears throat> so that's a way that you can use it in close quarters without having to use the entire arm. But when you can, that's what you want to do is line up all of these bones. Um, and so now, of course, everything has many different applications and everybody has different ways of doing things. And, you know, far be it from me to differ with the Bible of karate and say that the iron bone hand is used for striking this way and not this way. The fact of the matter is it's both, okay? Any hand technique that you do is going to have multiple applications and different ways of using it. So um, just, just like how a fist, just a standard fist, can be used to strike this way, to strike this way, as in a hammer fist, um, or to strike this way with the back of the fist. It's still just a fist, okay? Um, same thing with the iron bone hand. We saw that bringing the thumb down like this strengthens the muscles around the bones of the hand. So, yes, it is used for thrusting. It can be anyway, but I find that impractical. Um, certainly not something to teach to beginners and uh, frankly, if you can't learn something and then just go out there and use it, um, then it's not necessarily the most practical technique. Now, of course, any technique needs to be practiced. Um, so, I mean, I'm not saying that you can just watch this video and suddenly become a master of the iron bone hand. What I'm saying is that any weapon that you use should be, should be effective um, the minute you pick it up. And then it just takes training with that weapon to make it more effective, okay? Um, anybody can shoot a gun. Not anybody can shoot a gun safely or well. Um, anybody can use the iron bone hand. Uh, but with practice, you can learn to use it efficiently and effectively. And that's what I'm talking about here. Um, but all the same, if you, if you go out thrusting with this, without conditioning your hand first, you're probably going to hurt your hand pretty badly. And frankly, you'll probably hurt your hand a bit doing it this way. Um, but this is safer than this. And um, that's just a fact. Um, but it's still the iron bone hand either way. This is just the way that I use it and a way that I find to be most practical. So. Um, you know, hopefully you've enjoyed this and you've learned something from it and you find it to be practical and to serve you well, too. Um, train diligently. Never stop learning. You know, never uh, think that you've discovered all the secrets of anything. Um, I'm certainly not a master of all. I just, uh, I just know a few things and am still evolving. Um, so I find that the best way to look at these more ancient tools um, such as the Bobishi. Um, I find that it's best to leave them open to interpretation rather than to um, adhere to any kind of strict dogma um, 
you know, you don't want to get caught up in thinking that there's only one way to do anything. So uh, anyway, that's my presentation on the iron bone hand. Um, so like I say, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, follow Balanced Martial Arts on Facebook, read my blog, and thank you for watching, and good training.